This is the Mama Fit Podcast. This podcast is dedicated to all those mamas out there that want to fit a workout in a day or want to fit in a moment of bliss or hey, you want to fit into those skinny jeans. Dana Dieters is the host of Mama Fit Podcast. She's a mother of two beautiful girls, a wife, an entrepreneur. Her passion became her profession when she had a wake-up call about 15 years ago. With the support of others and a positive attitude, she was able to overcome the hurdles in her life. This mama strives to wake up and conquer each day to make it better than the day before. Her passion for business and education to others is what drives this mama to be the best version of Mama Fit. With Dana's background, she hopes to help you with your business, health and fitness needs, family time in the kitchen and give you motivation and inspiration to tackle your day and most importantly to help you fit in your mama fit time welcome back to the mama fit podcast so glad to be back it's been a couple weeks we just started a brand new challenge and i swear i cannot do too many things at one time I have to put a lot of effort into one and then make it really good. So I apologize for not having an episode out for a very long time, but I'm back. And today we're going to talk about meal prepping because I feel like that is one thing that people have issues on. And even with our challenge, which by the way is free, it is a four week challenge and you get daily moves every single day. And not only that, you get to be a part of this really awesome community of people that are wanting to feel better, move, and just feel like human again, being able to move and feel good and happy and all that jazz. So if you are interested, I'll leave the link in this episode um, bio. So if you want to, go ahead. If not, not a big deal. But I was just going to talk about the meal prep because I feel like that is number one thing that we all should work on. And it's something that is a little bit harder for most people. So one question, do you meal prep? For me, I usually start with one day, like a Sunday is my best day because that's the only day I do not work. I have more time. I don't work out. So basically, I put my workout time into my meal prep time. So um, my meal prep usually consists of even going shopping on the same day, grabbing the same the stuff that I want. I kind of have a plan. I make sure that everything I have is on a list. So when I go to the shopping, um, go grocery shopping, I actually have everything all there and I don't feel like I'm going to put other things in my cart while I'm going. I always feel like if I don't have my list, I feel like, oh gosh, what am I going to do now? What do I need? And I already should know this. I put it down on a piece of paper, but sometimes you just forget. So the premise behind meal prepping is to basically take one to two days a week, prepare all of your food for the next three to four days. You can prep just one meal for dinner or three meals, snacks ahead of time, depending on what level you're at as far as beginning or if you're an advanced meal prepper. Because if you are just starting off as someone new to meal prepping, do one or two meals at a time and then move on to the next week and do more. Because if you overwhelm yourself, it just makes it so much harder on you. I would rather you succeed at this meal prepping by just taking one baby step at a time. And the key to successful meal planning and prepping is having a plan. So Failing to plan is planning to fail. So rule number one with making uh, any type of meal prepping goals is to make a plan. It is far easier to be successful when you follow a plan. Take one day, sit down, write out what your meals are for the week. Even if it's only a couple meals, write them down. If you don't mind leftovers, which I like leftovers actually better than the meal itself for some reason then the meal prepping will be a breeze. But if your taste buds require variety, then maybe mix and match your meals will be a lot better for you, adding different spices and that sort of thing. So some of the basics to planning any meal is to pick a protein, one or two veggies, and possibly a starch or fruit. So that would be considered any seasonings and sauces you want to add up to your meal to make it more jazzy, your meal. You can also 
handle if you, some people like just plain chicken breast and see, steam veggies, but I can't eat that. I think it's super boring. So I need to add in some extra stuff. Also, don't forget to add in healthy fats like avocados, coconut oil, hemp seeds, or walnuts, that sort of thing to also make your meals a little bit better or if you want them for your snacks. So the first thing you want to do is go shopping. So once you've settled on the menu you have for the week, make your grocery list based off of what you have on your meals. This will keep you more organized, focused when you're at that food shopping and leaves you a little room for accidentally slipping something into your cart that doesn't belong. Or if you have kids, you can like be on a plan. Hey, we need to find this. Let's help me find this. So that's another way for kids to be involved. Plus they're not adding more stuff into your cart like my children like to do. So I have to like zone in. We have to have like a plan. We all have to find the item, like let, make it a fun little uh, like game of some sort. Um, what I like to do is stock up on fruit, vegetables, proteins, starches, uh, nuts, and seeds. We don't do a lot of dairy at my house, but if you are into Greek yogurt, maybe have that on your list or something as far as that kind of thing, um, string cheese or whatnot. So when I stock up on fruit and vegetables, I look for what's on special. <laughs> um, unless it's something that they really like, if they like certain fruits and we can get enough of it in one serving um, or one package, like, you know, if we get oranges or something, they can get, we can get a bunch of them for a good price. So I am like a, I like to maximize my budget with the food itself. So another one I like to do is the frozen veggies. So that's how I save money on my vegetables too. Um, otherwise I will get, uh, organic carrots and broccoli and that sort of thing too, that are cut up for the kids. Cause they do not like steamed veggies. They don't like roasted veggies and I love roasted veggies. So that is one thing that I typically do. Um, it's good to have, too much than not enough food because with the healthy stuff anyway, because then you end up eating stuff that's probably in your cupboard that's been there for a while, but you think you need to eat it. Okay. So storage is the next one. Who has so much rubber made, but have no lids for it? I am one of them. I feel like they're with my socks that are also missing. So they're all having a party somewhere else. Uh, this is a time where you rummage through your, your cabinet and find out if you have the plastic containers with the lids. Also, maybe get some glass containers. Those are great. I have a lot of those. So if I know I'm going to warm it up, I like to put it in a glass container. If something like fruit, I'll put it in the plastic containers or I get Ziploc baggies. I get the mini little snack bags for maybe nuts, uh, stuff that needs to be portioned out in different ways. So one thing I do too is I buy the same type of Rubbermaid, the same size. So if I lose a lid, I have a lid that goes with the one box, you know, the square rectangle container. So I buy all of those and they're great for lunch and dinner for portion sizes. So next one you got to do is cook. You got to cook it all up, you guys. You can't look at it. You got to eat it okay, and cook it up the way you like it. So some people don't like certain types of ways that they make food, but they think it's healthier. All right. So make sure you're going to make the food that you're going to eat. So for me, I don't like baked chicken. I know. Oh my God. Just hold the train, man. I only like crock pot chicken or on the grill. I don't know what it is, but I ate so much chicken when I did fitness competitions, it grosses me out. So if my husband makes baked chicken, guess what? I don't eat it. I think it tastes weird, it looks weird, and I just don't eat it. So it goes to waste, unless he eats it, of course. So for me, I like the crock pot chicken. That's how I make it. I shred it up and I use different sauces. I use salsa for one meal. I'll use like a low sugar barbecue sauce for one meal. I will add um, bone broth to one meal. Like I just change it up. So there's just different ways you can cook your meals. When I do any of this, I usually do about two pounds of chicken and that's usually for myself for the whole week. 
And then the kids will eat, they eat pretty much like the cut up chicken. We'll bake it and cut it up. They'll eat that. And then they just dip it in their sauces. They like, they're a sauce dipper. (laughs) So, um, that's how we do it, but we make enough for about three to four days. And then I'll cook again around Thursday or even Friday for the weekend. So I'm really prepared for the weekend as, as well. I don't just, um, I don't stop eating well on the weekends. I try to make sure I keep myself um, eating well, cause I feel better. It's not about what I look like. It's more of how I feel. I want to feel good all the time. Another stuff that we also do is when we do our vegetables. Okay. So my kids only eat raw veggies. I don't know why, but I think we ate too many of them. We're when they were little that that's all they eat. So they don't eat steamed veggies. They don't like the the roasted veggies that I make they because it's burnt usually like a little chard and they hate it. They think it's like I overdid it and I probably did, but I, that's how I like it. So again, make sure you're getting food that you will eat and your kids will eat. That is important. So making sure that you are adding some great fresh or dried herbs that will make it different, healthy oils if you want to maximize that flavor. If you are cooking grains ahead of time, which you can totally do with quinoa, brown rice, amaranth, that will last for about five days and you can cook it up for a whole week. I mean, that's what's great about it. And then just store it in your fridge. You can even maybe um, just take your measuring cup and serve it out on each of your Rubbermaid containers or any kind of container you have, the glass containers. And then you can add your protein and your veggie in your meal. And then you've got an awesome meal put together. It makes it your life a lot easier if you're bringing it to work. You can also bake up sweet potatoes, butternut squash, or spaghetti squash all at the same time that you're cooking everything else that you make. So again, if you don't have a slow cooker or an Instapot, you have got to be using that, especially in the winter. I feel like that's when you want it the most because you want things warm and ready to go. It is also great for making oatmeal too, but I would really suggest getting liners for your crock pot if you're going to do oatmeal because it really sticks to the side. So breakfast, obviously we all know is the most important meal of the day as it jumpstarts our metabolism, gives our body and brain the fuel it needs to function. Plus it helps you curve cravings later on in the day, which makes it easier to meet your goals. Okay, you guys, huge. You can make anything you want, you know, in the morning ahead of time. So if you like egg muffins, that's what I do is I do a lot of egg muffins and I'll have that in the morning. I will add it with a wrap if I want, or add sweet potatoes with it. Sometimes I'll do some overnight oats, cook it in the fridge. It's super easy to make. And I'll put some protein powder in there to flavor it up and give me some protein in the morning. Or I'll make my high protein pancakes, which are on my website at dannydaydressfitness.com. And you can portion those out in the baggies, refrigerate or freeze them until you're ready to use. So pretty simple, you guys. This is the thing. You just have to make the time and just do little bits at a time until you get more comfortable. So just be, just, just make sure you're not overwhelming yourself. Start small and then you can add on. So sometimes you can, make different types of things for breakfast. So here's like a really good one that's really easy. You just would put your oats. You could either do Greek yogurt with it or you could do um, protein powder, add in chai seeds and then some berries and prepare a big batch of the overnight oats in a slow cooker. That is enough. That will be enough for a few days. So each morning you can add in other ingredients. So if you want to start with that, that would be good a good breakfast idea. Of course, it's not something you have to do if you don't like that, but it's just an idea that you can use. Another one would be like turkey burgers plus quinoa and a roasted veggie that you like. So grilled turkey burgers patties, just enough for a few meals, and then cook that pot of quinoa because you can have that for five days and then roast a few different veggies once or twice a week. And then you have some veggies also. You can make a whole container of veggies and make that work. So those are kind of the big tips that I have. Just make sure that you evaluate your week, making sure what you need, what you want for your meals, and don't make or buy food that you think you should eat, but will not eat. 
okay, because that's just wasting food. Make sure you wash, chop your food up, clean them, prepare your meals on the day that you get your food because you are more apt to actually follow through with your plan, okay? Do it all in one day if you can. Bake roast veggies in a big batch. You can take two of the baking sheets, put your veggies on there. I do this every single week and I use usually broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and cauliflower and I use 450 for about 45 minutes. I make sure that they are seasoned with a really good seasoning, some garlic. I use um, a nonstick spray before I add the veggies on there so they don't burn and they, well, you can get them off the pan basically. Super easy, 45 minutes at 450. And then um, last but not least, just make sure you are taking one step at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself. Make a plan. If you need help with different recipes, you can go to my website, DanaDeersFitness.com. You can get more of these awesome recipes that are simple enough. And I will also add in my link for meal prepping 101 on my, um, on this episode too. So lots of good, good stuff for you here today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you loved it, please share with your friends and family and hopefully you will be on your step to making some big goals with your meal planning. Enjoy your day. Thanks so much for spending your time with the Mama Fit Podcast. Dana is so happy to share her tips and tricks with you. If you loved this podcast, we'd be so happy if you could share this episode with your friends and family. Also, if you have time, please leave us a review of your honest thoughts and reflections of the podcast on iTunes or our app. We'd be so grateful. If you have any topic or suggestion that you want answered, leave those in the comments below and make sure that you fit in your Mama Fit time.